okay, okay. That looks as annoying you, as it sounds. <laughs> you make a very nice machine gun. I was thinking like, uh, you know, like 1998 Toyota, but, you know, sure. Uh, well, machine guns are more common than 1998 Toyotas. So Where? That's, that's what I went with. I, well, like most of the world, you know. Really? Have you... I think your world might be skewed by too John, much anime. John, have you seen African children with 1998 Toyotas? <laughs> um, well, I guess in that specific, the specific region of Africa. In much of the world, it's more easy to get a machine gun than a 1998 Toyota. Is this? I don't think that that's factually That's accurate. a very specific year. Uh, yeah. It was a, a very specific to- Toyotas in general, like, yeah, sure, but a um, machine gun... Versus, uh, 1998 Toyota, I'd go with the ninth, uh, the machine gun. But Toyota in general, I'd go with the Toyota. A lot easier to find a Toyota than a machine gun. 1998 Toyota, I'd go with the machine gun. A lot easier to find. No, no way. Not even close. Um, I mean, just like watch a road for like ten minutes. You'll see. You know, like if you were to to mark every single car you see, you'll see at least two or three. Within 10 minutes. Okay, well, that's, you know, a very narrow sample region. And guess how many machine guns I'll see during that that's, time. We that's live in very, Illinois. That doesn't count. Well, <laughs> you know, Chicago. Who knows what kind of machine guns you'll find in the, the south side in certain neighborhoods. But anyway. Anyways. Uh, welcome to the first episode of the Dragon's Flow T-Cast. Are we recording? We, we've been recording for, like, five minutes or something. Okay, <laughs> This is the kind of conversation you'll expect you you can expect to find at the beginning of each one of our videos. And now for something completely different. Welcome to the Dragon's Flow Tea Cast. My name is Julian, and I am the owner of the Dragon's Treasure, a haven for anime and tea lovers. And that's my plug. Uh and I'm Nick. I am the owner of or the creative director or something of the YouTube channel Analog Drift. Uh, I do Let's Plays of interesting games and um, sort of analysis and um, criticism videos on TV, movies, games, whatever. So check that out, Analog Drift. Well, I've certainly called you worse. And hi there, my faithfuls and faithlesses. Choose your path. I'm uh I'm also known as the T guy, but my first name was John. You can call me whatever you like. Um, I respond to most things because John's a common name. Um, and yeah, so I think I'm gonna kick off the first conversation. Um, this is going to be primarily about T and anime and whatever other random tangents we go on. And video games. Video games, sure. Yes, video games are also very applicable. And my, I'm gonna start with anime, um, because. That's going to be a large focus on this particular episode. My gateway anime was Naruto. Um, And I know what you're saying out there. Hold your tits. Um, I avoided watching anime for a really long time. And it wasn't until the T-Man basically set my butt down and forced me to watch it that I began this epic journey, which is anime watching. I tend to do that a lot to people. Yes, forcing people to do things is one of the... Ooh, that came out bad. <laughs> anyway, um, but not incorrect. But not, but not inaccurate. <laughs> it is. That's how I got you into tea as well. That is how I got into tea. Yeah. Um, actually, that 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 is a whole story in and of itself. I'm gonna find you a wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I basically uh, I started Naruto like five or six years. No, it must be even more than that. Six or seven years after. Uh, it aired, it was actually in the first stages of Shippuden, so um, I just marathoned all of the real Naruto, if you will, and I got to skip the filler. And I think that's one of the reasons that I, I like anime as much as I do, is I didn't have to sit through, like, three years of nonsense. And believe me, I skipped it. I didn't feel like I missed a thing. Um, yeah, you didn't. I, I really don't think so. I've gone back and watched a couple episodes and arcs, and it, it really didn't provide me with anything i felt like i was missing um it's like one of those easter bunnies and you get it and it looks great and it's like oh man a huge thing of chocolate and then you bite into it and it's hollow (laughs) um yeah it's true and you know they do so much to make it like 
visually appealing, and it's like that waxy chocolate too. It's yeah. not even like <laughs> you, you leave it alone for a couple. Dri- di- oh wow! But you leave it alone for a couple days, and it like starts to change color, and some of it like it looks like it's turning into ash very slowly. Yeah, so uh, that's exactly uh, avoid the filler if you can. Uh, that was my introduction, and I think I was into anime last. Which one of you guys started first? Uh, probably me. Okay, so then that makes... 1998. Huh? <laughs> no, I'm before that. Okay. I... Technically, I started back when I was, like, four years old. Oh, well, like, yeah. Like, Vampire Hunter D and Gaivin oh, and other okay. things that four years old should not I was going to say Pokemon and DBZ, but okay. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Please childhood. Please do tell. <laughs> So four years old, watching things like Vampire Hunter D and Guyver, yeah, that was not exactly, that was not kosher. Very child. F- Did you watch the four kids version? No, <laughs> I watched a very bloody Cody version. I also grew up in Eastern Europe, this, so they probably made it even bloodier than it should have been. This 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 kind of uh, probably explains a bit of your character. Hi, I yeah. just have to take a moment, like. You know, he said uh, in Europe they could have made it even bloodier. It's like all, all the blood that's edited out in America just gets shipped over to. <laughs> um, yeah, so that 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 explains a lot. Uh... But after that, when like, Tsunami... it's gotta go somewhere. <laughs> after that, when Tsunami came over, that really reignited that passion. Beginning with DBZ, Yu Yu Hakusho, and my first sub anime was Naruto, and just. Why not from there? Next thing I know, I'm owning a business based on anime and tea. Speaking of tea, uh, before we get to the the, um, the tea fellow, also known as Nick, also known as the analog drift guy, um, we're we're drinking one of the Dragon's Treasures tea. Do you wanna wanna tell us a little bit bit about that tea, man? This tea is the Iron Goddess of Mercy, otherwise known as Tea Kuan Yin. It is an oolong tea and is. One of my favorites, I believe it's Nick's favorite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is one of those wonderful teas that actually tastes a little bit better the second time around as opposed to the first. And that's the one we're on, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it is quite, quite good. You can find it on my website. now. Nah, I won't plug anymore. What is your website, out of curiosity? www.thedragonstreasure.com And somebody without an accent... Translate. I think they the, got the, it. The dragon's treasure dot com. Yes. Um so it's actually one of the few teas that's not named after an anime. Um so but it it's it's really worthwhile. Um it's an old tea. Um it's a twisted oolong, I think. E... No, I think it's a it's, bald it's in oolong. Little balls, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's a bald oolong then. Um, not to be conv- not to be confused with the bald monks that drunk it. It's it's a bald meaning that they make the tea into a ball oolong. Um, it's got kind of nutty notes to its flavor. How would you? Hmm? Well, I say it tastes like milk and honey. Okay, yeah, that's pretty apt. But anyway, um, with no further ado, since it is your favorite tea, and now we're going to return it to the middleman. Uh, what was your first experiences with anime? Uh, I've well, I watched a lot of, you know, Pokemon and all that stuff that was on, you know, Saturday morning cartoons, but I don't really consider that anime because it it feels like, you know, just Saturday morning American cartoons. And it was, of course, edited heavily for Western audiences, uh, like Cardcaptor Sakura was <laughs> completely changed so that, uh, what's his face? Sauron or something. S- Sauron? Sauron. I think it was actually okay. something, something like that. Kyle uh, Sakura gets taken to a new dimension, Middle Earth. Dun, what the dun, hell dun, am dun, I into dun, now? Dun, dun, dun. I am going to look this up, and if his name is Sauron, next week we're going to have a little talk about who's right and who's wrong. Anyway, uh, yeah, they changed it so that he was the main character and, and Sakura was like less important and stuff. But anyway, what I would consider my first real experience with anime was right after Cowboy Bebop came out, and the library had the first disc and only the first disc, and I watched the first four episodes, and I'm like, hey, cartoons can't do this. And I got to the fifth episode, and halfway through the fifth episode, which was the last episode on the disc, 
and right where the story actually begins, and it's an awesome story, uh, the disc got scratched. And so my experience with Cowboy Bebop, the first anime I ever watched was our hero um, falling through a stained glass church with a sword through his chest and then the DVD skipping and ending and I'm like, oh no. So I never watched, I never was able to finish that until like two or three years later. <coughs> but um, also, our library is really good with picking out their anime. Somebody must, there must be a nerd, whoever is in charge of, of picking out their Japanese DVDs. Uh, I think after that, I also watched uh, Ghost in the Shell, Akira, and Serial Experiments mm-hmm. Lane. So, yeah, deep in there, like iceberg level three, right on, the, right <laughs> off the bat. No Naruto for me <laughs> until much later. I think I repressed um, a lot of my early – so I, I had like the Toonami experience. I, I really did. Um, that was when I, when I wanted to be rebellious. I'd wait for my parents to, to go to sleep and then I would sneak into one of the TV rooms and put on the TV and then I'd watch um, – DBZ was always on um, – and so I saw like the same six episodes forty times, <laughs> uh, and then the the other major anime that was on, which I don't think of as my first exposure, just because I didn't, I never got to the level of enjoyment so much as fascination, um, was uh, Gundam Wing, and that just befuddled me as a kid. And I tried to make my brother watch it because I spent the entire time as whatever, an eight-year-old, trying to figure out who is the good guy, who is the bad guy, and I was so sure a few times, and then that would get tossed aside, and it just (laughs) frustrated me. It was fascinating, but I didn't enjoy it, uh, because I couldn't figure out who I was supposed to be rooting for. Your little monkey brain couldn't wrap its head around... That's uh... racist. You're not, you're not black. (laughs) You're human. So anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I... when I when I say my first experience with anime, like I meant the first time I got hooked, um, and I mean I think I finished the first through like sixth arc of Naruto within two weeks or something like that. It was like that's what I'm talking about. Like that was my first major hook. Um, but with with a lot of the '90s kids, I I did um, I had the tsunami exposure. So yeah, only '90s kids will remember this. <laughs> We're old. So, yeah. on that note, speaking about tea and anime, so about, oh gosh, like a, a week and a few days ago, we were at Anime Midwest having a panel. A panel on tea um, and anime. And anime. <laughs> I'm Much, seeing a pattern here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people showed up, kind of to our surprise. Uh, we did another panel at Collision Con yes. last year, uh, and we weren't we were expecting literally zero people to show up because that place was empty. Right, there the were like had almost literally zero people. It had almost literally zero people. It, it was the last year that Collision Con ran. Uh huh. Like that's it. They was they were going to run this year, but they they mm. couldn't. And so we looked around, and there were about twenty people. And so much to our surprise, when we started our panel. We noted that there were like thirty people in the room. I it's think, just like, I think did you guys the, have kids? I think the entire convention actually showed up to our panel. <laughs> it's probably not unheard of. Um... But anyways, well, warm welcome. Uh, and this time we were at uh, Anime Midwest is probably what probably like six or seven times the size. Oh, much uh, way more. I mean, it's it got like around ten thousand people. Yeah, ten thousand people. Yeah, so a good number. Um... Yeah, we had like thirty people, uh, which is yeah. like a, a fairly good turnout. Well, considering a time slot, yeah, we yeah would... we were the last slot on the last day at five so, o'clock on Sunday. Yeah, everyone was gone, packed up in their hotel rooms and checked out. Um, you know, taking anyone there was probably uh, just taking cosplay pics and and trying to get out and get their last hookups. Uh, Hookups, and uh, you know, get their merch if there was any left, whatever. So, 
Well, uh, thanks, Rick, thanks to you guys who who came to our panel. Actually, yeah, that was actually a lot of fun. The the um, the audience was fantastic. Like, yeah, I, I usually start by feeling out the crowd, and they like laughed at all my crappy puns and jokes. Uh, they they were, were they participated. Laughed is not the word I'd use. They I'd, laughed. It was more of a groan. No, they laughed. They, uh, they audibly rolled their eyes. Audibly rolled their... Later on, yeah, but <laughs> they still chuckled and everything. Like Later on is in the second time. Yeah, but <laughs> at the beginning, you know, they, they were receptive. Um, like, I tell... Uh, it, as you will find out, I tell a lot of, like, you know, just bad puns and jokes. And um, there were a, a loud minority of people that were, like, just on board, 110%. And I'm like, holy crap, I was... Not expecting that. And so I got to do a little bit more of that throughout the presentation, which was a lot of fun. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that that was kind of the, the my experience with the whole con, was the the energy there was fantastic. Um, the, the cosplays were next level. I didn't really see that many. Cosplay? Well, you, you didn't go until, like, the last day. That's true. But the rest of us... So, it's actually kind of interesting... We've gone mainly to ASEN, yeah, and I've only been to Anime Midwest twice now. This was my first time. Your first time? Mm-hmm. Me too. And it was... What's well, a good way of putting it? The cosplays in Anime Midwest had much more obvious love and thought put into them. While ASEN was just a lot more, hey, eBay, give me what I need. I hope this is the right size. <laughs> um, Cookie cutter. Like, um, I think I saw a total of maybe three Harley Quinn cosplays this time at Midwest, and all of them were completely different versions, you know, like, and like you said, care went into these things. So like little details that were in various comics, like I'm trying to think of, um, one of them was really unique. I'll actually find the picture here as, as we talk. Um, but it was like a really niche Harley Quinn as opposed to just like, oh, there's a suicide Harley and there's a suicide Harley and there's a suicide Harley Quinn and there's a suicide, you know? Um, so, so like the Deadpool of Harley Quinn's. Actually, she was <laughs> uh, walking around with Samurai Deadpool. So even like yeah. the, the, you know, um, the the cookie cutters weren't there and there were so many just, um, you know, they were handmade props, but they were high class, next level handmade props and everything. Yeah, like, it, the the community was just phenomenal. Um, hold on a second. It, there she is. Cool. Um, what an awesome picture. <laughs> what an awesome first. picture that even the two of us can't see. Yeah, so I'm going to describe her. You know, so, um, <laughs> she has a, she had a handmade mallet, which, um, the, the barrel was probably about, about four feet, three to four feet long, um, and I think I can't tell, but it looks like she coordinated with the Deadpool so that she'd like go around chasing him because the, the, the cosplays go so well together. She got the, the, the high heeled boots, right. And, um, you know, just the, basically the way to describe it is, um, it, this was more unique than I thought it was. Um, but there's like tassels coming off of her costume. So there's like you know, like a textural aspect that you can only get through cosplay as opposed to, you know, like in picture or in film. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, when you, when you, when you, when you adapt something, when you draw something, you know, they, the, it doesn't necessarily have to obey the laws of physics. And so that, that's one of the things that makes cartoons and anime unique is that you can do these really cool looking things, um, in a way that you couldn't do it live action and make it look, um, make it look reasonable. When you when you put on a movie, um, on the other hand, like uh, one of the great examples of costuming, I think, was uh, the first Daredevil movie. Like uh, the movie itself was kind of meh, but they made his um, his costume out of leather because it would absorb blows and things. Um, and like Batman, they they made his bat suit armor. You know, versus in, in the comics, a lot of them are sort of just like you know, like they could be rubber. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, the, the materials you use in film matter a lot, but you know, it's, it's to look cool and everything you do says, sends several messages, like whether, you know, you can tell if it was made to just look cool versus if it's functional versus if it, you know, there's all that sort of things versus meeting someone in costume, um, 
there's you can you can see the textures better than when you're in person uh, than when you're in film um you can compare like the comfort so like some some cosplays like i guess if, if the furry community has one benefit it's just like it looks like it'd be really soft and comfy to wear those clothes <laughs> You know, it's probably not. It's probably like, have you ever seen a wig? Yes. Like, you know how the inside is just like really like rough and itchy. Uh, yeah, but but I bet it's like that on the inside. It's probably like that. But then you could take off your glove or something and pet yourself and be like, it's OK, buddy. You know, like the textures there, like she has tassels coming out of everywhere. So, you know, it would move, um, you know. So anyways, long story short, um, she coordinated, I think, with with the Deadpool and um has just a lot of things that are unique to cosplay. Um, yeah. Oh, and then another example, actually, for the cosplay. Um, I still have no idea what they were, but they look kind of like gypsies, so I, I, I kind of want to figure it out. Um, while they moved, they had bells, like, on their hips, and so they were, like, moving in unique ways that created, like, a, um, music. It was really neat. Um, oh, yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah. So, I mean, these are all, like, next-level cosplays. It's not just, like, they, they found their comic book and and maintained every detail. Some of them did. Right. Um, they were adding all of these unique, um, unique, focused details to their cosplays, adding to the characters, adding to, you know, and, and extrapolating from their personalities, like, you know, everything was just balanced and played with. And so I saw some that were just spot on, you know, from the anime. Um, I saw some that were just like, oh, that's really a unique take on that. But love and care every step of the way. Um, I'm going to contrast that with, you know, um, I saw several at, um, what, what's it called? Asan? Asan. Where, um, keeping a Harley Quinn specifically, where they just had like a daddy's yeah. little monster shirt. Yeah, and they put up pigtails like they didn't color anything. It was just like, well, well okay. I mean, cool yeah, that you support it, but as as the uh, the size of the con grows, and Asen has exponentially, um, like what size was it when we started going? I like began fifteen thousand. I began two thousand seven, so probably something around there, maybe twelve thousand. And now it's like a hundred thousand or something, right? It's not that big, <laughs> no. is it? No, uh, thirty thousand, give or take. Uh, wow, I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, Goddamn. Yeah. I okay. hope so. Yeah. Super wrong. Anyway, the point is, uh, as the size of the community grows, so does the size, the amount of people who kind of don't care, or they're just sort of you know, filthy casuals. I think the rave is just one of the worst things Asen keeps doing. I'm sorry, ravers, but you're toxic. Um. Well, I think it's also like the biggest attraction for for Asen to a lot of people. Yes, the like wrong... half the people there are just there for the rave. Yeah, but that's the problem. It's attracting the wrong kind of people, and yeah. then they kind of just spread in place they're not supposed to be. Yeah. the The original intention was basically to make it a social. Yeah. You know, it's like like a high school dance, except mm -hmm. you know we're socially awkward. Turn up the music so we don't talk quite as much. And now they have an actual formal, like ball kind of thing. Right. That would be nice to see. You know, especially if it was like, especially the cosplay balls. You know, if that could grow and grow, that would be nice to see. Well, I don't think it's a cosplay ball. I think it's a formal like suit and tie kind of thing. Right. <laughs> but you can do you can cosplay in suit and tie. We have so many good examples mm. now. Oh, come on. Who doesn't want to be Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon? Like, come on. Relationship goals. Hashtag. Well, but Sa Sailor Moon... Oh. Now it's Black Butler and a small 10-year-old child. Okay, fine. <laughs> if that's what you want to, you know, the post-prom to be. <laughs> what a creepy show. Um, Speaking of shows, uh, what have we been watching lately? I have been watching my love story. Oh, yes. And my heart cannot take any more cuteness. How far in are you? Ooh, I'm at least at the halfway point now. And I keep getting nervous because they just keep making me fall more and more in love with everything. 
I feel like they're gonna pull an anime in like the last two episodes. Like pull someone's gonna, anime. yeah, it's like last two episodes. Like someone's gonna like either die or just gonna go to some like really depressing, depressing way. Like I'm just, I feel like I'm being set up. It can't be this nice all the time. Something bad's gonna happen. He's got high, high hopes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a po- I'm a pessimist because I have high expectations. I can see how things could have been better. Uh, and I am a, like the opposite. I my mindset is uh, optimism through negativity. <laughs> if you if you set your sights low, then when something good happens, you're pro- pleasantly surprised. Okay, we're comparing. So then I guess I'm never any one thing for too long. <laughs> I kind of just fill in where I need to be, but I'd like to say that I am optimistic when I should be optimistic and pessimistic when I should be pessimistic. Like, we're going to get the best out of this, or this thing needs to be fundamentally destroyed. Well, thanks for filling in the the, uh, neutral gap. I'm not neutral. I am optimistic or pessimistic. I am not just like, I don't care. Or like, I guess, guys. Well, yeah, but like, we both both have the extremes represented here. Mm Mm-hmm. So you you filled in the uh, the missing part, kind of. Yes, I I do that. Um, but like, uh, let me let me think of an example. Uh, what's a not very great show? Well, I'll go with the great show because I'm optimistic right now. Um, <laughs> I love Code Geass. Code Geass is just like the perfect show and if you haven't seen it or it's been a while since you've seen it as in more than three days you should watch it or watch it again watch Code Geass Lush Lamprush is my favorite character of all time my favorite character in all of fiction that is a lofty statement yes and he deserves that and more unless they screw up the next uh, series which I really hope they do not do what oh you mean season three yes you hope they don't Yes, okay. I hope they do not mess it up. There Did you go. guys ever watch the the spin-off show uh, Akito I, something? I tried, but I just I yeah. watched the first one and it was kind of meh. I started it. That that was where the the new Gias user was, right? Like he couldn't Nude? die. The new new Gias user. An EW. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I heard nude. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Take a look at what my GS is now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, as there was fact, a, there was a new GS user, but I don't remember. I think that anything really. It was that he couldn't die. Anyway, I started that and then I caught up and just lost it. Um, but again, one of the. It so, didn't help that they came out with one like forty minute episode each year for like six years or something. Yeah. Well, and again, so the thing that's all right. So let's talk about Code Geass for a second because this is something wonderful. Um, Code Geass <laughs> was a bit of everything. It was a slice of life meets a mech anime meets a revolution anime meets um, supernatural uh, anime. And so there was C two represented kind of like the magic girl. Um, that's true. And then they, they sort of turn that on its head by giving it to the boy, you know? And so there's all these different elements that make no sense. Like if you were to propose it to somebody like, okay, what kind of, what kind of show would you, are you feeling like? And they're like, well, I feel like a magic girl. Um, and then someone else is like, I want to watch a mech. I want to watch a war thing. I want to watch, it, it, it fills all of these roles simultaneously beautifully. And one of the reasons that it can do this so well is because of, it's complex characters. Like the Lelouch in episode one, although he shares certain philosophies with episode one Lelouch, is not the same character as the end. Um, so, and, and that's the same for almost all characters, arguably. Yeah. So, uh, right. Good, good character development almost all around. Yes, almost all around. Almost. That, I mean, that's like regular everyday life. You know, like there's some people that have to learn the same lesson daily and don't, you know, uh, they they always, they exist in real life. And if I was like that guy from uh, uh, Simpsons, like worst character ever, I'd be like, <laughs> who would believe that they actually exist except they do. And this show addresses both of those things. Like there are moments where you can see because you, you see Lelouch in his most 
private moments. Like, he is cracking at the seams, you know. He's just coming apart, and it's just sheer willpower, holding him together, keeping him committed to the end goal, which, whew, I'm not going to spoil, even though it's been many years. Watch it. It's been um, 10 years. It's been, oh, God. It's been 10 years. Um, that makes me feel really old. Um, uh, you want to, whoa. You want to know what makes you feel really old? Hmm. Um, watching Cowboy Bebop um, 20 years after. Uh, it, it's been 20 years since it came out, and I watched it when it came out. Oh, God. Almost. You old. 19 years. You've been really... Um, but so I'm I'm optimistic. I, I, can, I can go on for days about the, the benefits of Code Geass, and even in that, so like I'm pessimistic towards people a little bit you know like there are certain people who just will not get it like you can spell it out for them you can show them in their lives or uh, you know outside of their lives current everyday examples and they just still won't get it so there's pessimistic aspects in there but they are relegated to where pessimism is the proper response similarly there's totally optimistic things like um you know there's there's these great character developments sometimes it takes just sheer force of will to to carry on and they show that um, but yeah, it's not like I'm, <laughs> I'm optimistic because I keep my standards low or because, uh, everything could be so much better. I'm just going to cry about it. Like, wow. Wait, you hit both of us. Yeah. <laughs> Using your own words. Like that's the, that's the point. Like that's, you know, there's certain responses to each of them. And, you know, I, I really, I don't stay one thing for too long. Um, as, as a result of this. Next thing. Next thing? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so, uh, yeah, you watched your stuff. What have I watched? Uh, well, I, I haven't watched any anime recently, but I did watch all of Doctor Who season 12, 10, something. The new season. Um, it was really good. That's all I have to say about it. Because saying... Anything else would be a spoiler. Uh, it's so, like, tightly written. Everything about it is, uh, it all comes together in the end in, like, a perfect way. Uh, that's, it's perfectly planned and executed. And you can't see any of it coming uh, except for one part that I kind of was like, I understand the science behind this because I'm smart, but, uh, yeah. And, uh, we all watched Game of Thrones last night. Yes, we did. So we're not going to go into spoilers any now, right now, um, uh, but we will have a post-season kind of, uh, what did you call it earlier? The Dragon's Flow Tea Cast, Second Infusion. Second Infusion, yeah, that I like that. Uh, yeah, so if there's any kind of recent, well, any kind of show, anime or not, um, we're not really going to go into spoilers, unless it's like 10 years old. At that point, you know, you had your chance. You've been warned. Yeah, so on the... Um, on this topic of Game of Thrones, what I will say is that uh, it has an excellent first sequence. I called it really fast, but I'll, everyone I've talked to, it just hit everyone by surprise. Fantastic way to start it. Fantastic ending. And the stuff in between was just sprinkled out just right. It was well paced. Yeah, I think you and I were the only ones that, that figured out what was going on right away. Yeah, you got to have your head screwed on just, just the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> got to be a little crazy to figure that one out. Anyway, um, they left on that just god awful, beautiful cliffhanger of just so. Let's begin. It sounds so like gentle and nice, but just watch the episode. The context is just. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to nerding out about this in the second infusion. Yes, the second infusion. Um. So, what else is going on? Well, I've been keeping up with Boku no Hero, but we're in the same sort of category as. Game of Thrones, it's going on right now, so I can't say too much. Are we you need to watch it, Nick? Yes. Yeah, Nick. I still haven't watched it. I've I've heard your your complaints. Uh, not about the I'm show, not, about I'm you not, not watching it. I'm not gonna. Yeah, you haven't complained about the show. You've said it's it's really good. 
you have complained about how I haven't watched it. Uh, it's not necessarily on my list, so uh, you might be complaining for a while longer. I will complain however long it takes. Okay. It's a great show. Uh, they they keep they keep evolving their storytelling and they keep evolving the characters. It is fantastic. Uh, not quite Code Geass, but certainly higher than Death Note. Oh, so I remembered something that um, I watched this week. Um, a Silent Voice. Uh, it's about... Well, have you guys heard of it? Nope. No. It's about a girl who is deaf and uh, she's a transfer student into this class. So she hasn't heard about it either. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true in a way. Um Though I, I guess there would be a lot of fourth wall breaking involved if she had. But anyway, uh, so the main character is this kid who constantly bullies her, you know, basically for no reason other than she's deaf and he can. And there's a bunch of, um, um, you know, sequences where he's just bullying her for, and it just he's this complete scumbag. And uh, it flashes forward a, a few years... And he's on the brink of killing himself because he feels so bad for doing that. And since then, like, he kind of realized how terrible he was just as, like, a general human being. And he meets up with her uh, kind of on purpose, but but more just to apologize to her and like show her that you know he actually cared um and they end up becoming friends and the story goes from there uh he you know is an antisocial kind of loser and it's about the two of them and life in general and how they deal with their problems I uh, I was expecting it to be about, like, you know, an inspirational, like, oh, you can do things even though you can't hear, but it's actually not about that at all. There's there's very little that's about um, her being deaf, and um, it's mostly not all about that at all. There's very little that has to do with that, uh, other than the obvious, you know, problems that arise from that. Uh, I have the manga, uh, manga. and I, I went, read that a while ago, and it's faithful to it in a way that it takes out the bad parts of it and replaces it with good parts, which is kind of weird. Uh, there's a lot in the manga that um, manga. sort of drags on for a while, and it's kind of pointless, I think. And the movie kind of solves that problem, which is really good. So, yeah, that's that's what I think about that. So, are they communicating via phone or he sign learned, language? <laughs> he learned sign language just to sort of apologize and atone for what he did. Okay, and is that how he... How does he become... So, most of the time, uh, bullies are fairly social like they 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 want to manipulate everyone around them to give them fear or respect and you know they talk about him but he becomes this sort of anti-social quiet kid yeah so well this is kind of like a mild spoiler but um in the beginning he's kind of a like it's not just him it's the whole class right so he's kind of going along with the crowd but then he sort of ascends into the main bully and everyone else is like um he gets the blame for um her hearing aids getting destroyed and mm. everyone sells him out kind of and then he becomes kind of ostracized and then he becomes the target of bullying and some stuff happens and um he kind of sees like they they kind of get a connection. Okay. That makes sense because if that was what led up to his ostrac ostrac ostracism? Uh, yes. Ostrich. Um, ostrich. If that led up to him getting an ostrich, uh <laughs> he would uh you know sort of seek to 
rectify that in order to sort of like fix his worldview and everything like that. So that yeah. makes that's that's it, actually really neat. His his worldview is like ruined. Like he's really messed up mentally. Um, you know, in his high school time or junior high or whatever. So if you have social anxiety, read uh, a silent voice or Koei no Katachi. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, so news, um, Dynasty Warriors Nine is open world. Julian, you like this? I do. I kind of like it. So I am very interested to see how this turns out. For those who are not aware, Dynasty Warriors it's up to number nine because each and every game in between it is literally the same game because they take a a historical moment in China, and basically build a game around it. So because of that, 90% of the game is just copy, paste, let's throw a new numbered, we have a new game! That's essentially it. I'm not exaggerating too much. They add a couple of little things every now and then that takes about maybe a week of actual work. Yeah, they fix the graphics up too. Yeah, and so that's been the bulk of it. But to do this, they have to really put in work and really put in thought. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to turn out. Uh, and there's there's some new, very innovative um, improvements to the engine. Like, it, it brings it into the brave new world of, of 2002 with these uh, day-night cycles and weather, <laughs> weather things. So, yeah, it's got the whole open world thing going on. Uh, you can use ranged attacks, which sort of were there before, but not really. Um, and it's got grappling hooks that you can use to scale walls, which uh, that's kind of interesting because before, um, I think I called it like poking your finger through a stick of butter just by like, you have to just fight your way through a ton of enemies to get to, you know, your goal and, it's gonna see. It's gonna be interesting to see how things like a grappling hook would affect just the flow of the game. Yeah. So this is an open world. So this is like one human faction versus another human faction, right? Like you choose which side of the war you're on. Um, I don't know about that, but it's well in the other games, uh, you you choose a character and you play as them and. You know, it's kind of like a very linear, closed battle. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story mode is, like, you're assigned a character and it's basically the same thing. So I would imagine that you would switch between characters and it's kind of like, you know, go to this place and fulfill the mission. Uh, It also said that that there would be a lot of side quests and stuff like that, just, you know, kind of thrown out into the world. I think the the last one, uh, not Dynasty Warriors, but Samurai Warriors, sort of, like, they were kind of phasing it in a little bit, like it had, like, fishing mini-games and stuff. Mm. Uh, so, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Also, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're into this. I am really excited about this. I know I said I'm a pessimist. I am. Um, but just, we just keep talking about things I love. <laughs> One of the reasons why I'm loving this is because I've seen enough anime, I've seen enough games, it's all just kind of been done before. Now, I care more about how you do it. And with this game so far, they have obviously put in the love, even from just what they've shown so far. Every character's move and attack is actually based in the anime and manga. Even the basic punches. And it's just beautiful they didn't just you know give him random moves oh he's gonna do this combo no it is straight from the actual show or manga itself yeah like frame by frame frame by frame that is beautiful so i'm really happy to see that everyone who's played the game because this is different from the usual dragon ball fighting games because they're catering more towards competition fighting yeah it was was at evo the other day Mm mm-hmm and so everyone who's played it, both DBZ lovers and non-DBZ lovers, have just praised the game. 
when it premiered in um what was it E3, E3. it just stole the show. It's wonderful. Um, at the time of this recording, they released the trailer for Trunks, and he looks he looks like the most beautiful character so far. Just his move set just looks so smooth and fluid. He uses the sword, which is wonderful. So many games don't make him use the sword, or just make him only use the sword. Here it's actually like he, you know mixed in, and in about like three or four days, we get to see two more characters. Oh, that's cool! I didn't know. Yeah, that. the demo comes out on the twenty sixth. Not the demo, the um beta. beta? Yeah, we will have nine playable characters. Uh, the six we saw, Trunks. And those two new people. Was that an open beta? Closed. Oh. So sign up. Um, I'll play it on your PS4 because it's not on Steam. Did they say how to sign up? Because I... Yeah, now that you say it, I remember uh, hearing about that. But I don't remember um, how that you get into it or if it's... Uh, this one guy like I know knows the details. His name thing. is Internet. Would you like his number? Uh, not right now. I'm on a podcast. If you Google Internet, you might be able to find him. Okay, well, I'm I'm kind of busy right now. Oh, yeah. Um, speaking of podcasts, Dragon Ball Fighters. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, I oh, feel like wow. we should do a... Um, on one hand, I feel like we should do a live streaming of um, us slash me playing this game. On the other hand, I can get kind of passionate about these things, and it might get us banned. Um... It'll be a fun time when the game comes out. I'll just leave it at that. I don't have as much time nowadays because I'm old to play games. So something's got to be really special to catch my attention. And Dragon Ball Fighters is that something special for me this year. Yeah, that's true. You you play one game a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, he plays more than one game. May, yeah, maybe one or two. Uh, so they're going to release two more characters. Who, who's your guys' vote? They're probably uh, gonna wait, just... who's, who's in there so far? Goku, Vegeta... Um... Goku, Vegeta, Tr- Kid Gohan, Cell, Majin Buu, and Frieza. Yeah, okay. And now, now so... Trunks. Trunks. Um... So I'm going to go with... Wait, did you already say Cell? Yes. Uh... Hmm. Well, they're My probably gonna... My Piccolo. Yeah, they're probably gonna get rid Piccolo. of the most obvious ones, like Piccolo. He's definitely gonna be in this game. He's, uh, you I'm just gonna saying. say they're gonna say one obvious one like Piccolo. Yeah, that's a good guess. And one um, like not obvious one like um, one of the androids. Hmm. That would be that. That would make sense. Um, though I think they're gonna release the androids together. Like I don't think they're going to release like 17 without 18. I don't want them to do both because they're they're similar enough in the fighting style. Yeah, they have to only stick. With I th- one. I think they'll do 18. And and seventeen as DLC maybe, maybe I skin could... change. Nah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> all you would have to do would be like a DLC costume or something. Yeah, they they really seem to be sticking to the higher end of the the like power level spectrum, you know. So they're, they're yeah. Um, well, the T-Man and spoil, I have... spoiler for Super, it, they're up there. Hmm. Spoiler for Super, they're up there. They're up there. Oh yeah, androids. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, they, even back then, the androids were up there. Uh, well, so... yeah, but the up there is now different. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we we were talking, and they're probably not going to release Krillin. I mean, for a few mm. reasons. Number one, nobody really wants to play as Krillin. Sorry, Krillin. His size might kind of get in the way. That's, that's true. In a fighting game, though, that can be a, an asset. You know, like, things go above his head. Have you played Goldeneye? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, also they were going for like each fighter has like a different style. Mm-hmm. Uh, Krillin would be someone who could kind of use that to his advantage and, and be a character who that like that's kind his of his, style is his dying. thing. His, no, his, <laughs> <laughs> his style is short. Short guy. He doesn't even have to crouch down. He just dodges the Kamehameha by just not jumping. Well, yeah. Um, like, you, you you would have to go out of your way to hit him. Like, he, he's weaker than everybody else, but you, you have to uh, try harder to hit him. Yeah, but that doesn't sound like fun, though. No, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah that's not pretty dumb. But so it anyway, is a cool idea. We, so we don't, think that, we don't think they're going to utilize him, but... 
Uh, you, you were just saying the other day, uh, what, has it been two or three times that Piccolo's been the strongest known person in the universe? Yes, from what we know. Uh, when he fought first form Frieza, he was at least on level of that a little bit, or oh, actually second form Frieza, the big giant bulky He-Man version. Where after he got wished back and absorbed Nail, he was stronger than Vegeta, yeah. stronger than um, Goku, who was still in the middle of recovering, um, stronger than potentially stronger than first form Frieza. So that's number one. Um, number two is actually back in the Cell Saga before Goku came back. Um, he was, in terms of the Z Fighter, the strongest one, but obviously Nap and Vegeta were stronger. And in the Android Saga, before we found out Android 16 was a beast, um, he became the best hope on Earth because he was on the same level as the androids, who were at the time the biggest big bad. And then Cell showed up and was like, Hi. Just kind of, you know, threw things for a loop. No, Cell showed up, he, he fought for a while, he was on the losing side, and then he begged. <laughs> and eventually became perfect. Well, he used Vegeta's arrogance against him. Oh, Cell, he's still my favorite DBZ villain, but there was so much more they could have done with him. So many possibilities. And there there. it is. <laughs> and And with this, we will be talking about dbz super at the end of the or, or second infusion or, or will we will we be doing it at the end of this podcast or in it's gotta the be second, second infusion. infusion um so actually on that you're note, gonna I be will going say, on too long uh-huh yes oh, yeah. okay but by the way i will I, have a lot to say about I, it too. I, I i caught up oh good so, so i'm i'm all in uh okay so basically since we're all on on par with this tell me if i go too far um, yeah, they're spiking big time. But anyway, uh, so where we're at reminds me a lot of, uh, we just watched going back to Game of Thrones. S- someone was talking like a recap episode and they're like, well, obviously, can I say that? Can I say last season? Is that, is that too soon? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Last season of Game of Thrones? If, yeah. If, if you're fine. If you're, haven't watched seasons, uh, Six? Yeah. Yes. Then skip forward a minute. Yeah. Uh, so the the guy was basically saying, well, obviously, you know, Jon Snow is going to be back. And obviously, Arya Stark's going to get her eyesight back. Like, bull! It could have very easily been, you know, like, I thought that Arya was probably just going to be an, an awesome blind assassin. I, I did, too. Like, that And is I read not... the books. I, there was way more stuff there was way more uh evidence let's say and that that might not be a good word for it but let's, let's roll with it yeah and but uh, no i don't think john snow was ever dead it's something martin would have done like everyone's just like no but john snow though and there were tons of theories about how it might happen and everybody from the moment he was stabbed and just you know left to bleed out in the snow um, everyone's like, okay, he's gonna come back. He's gotta come back. And then there, but you could hear the desperation in people's voices as they suggested these things. It's like he can't be dead. You know, it wasn't like a, oh, he's just gonna be back. There were so few people. Yeah, that were... you're you're right. Like you know, Ned Stark's a White Walker, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you never saw his head got cut off. It was done off screen. <laughs> come on. But uh, they basically spoiled him coming back with. Uh, their marketing campaign and it could have been the, the reason could have been well I'm never watching Game of Thrones again because my favorite character is dead I'm never doing it again they keep killing all off all my favorite characters and this has just gone too far but that's what I'm saying is like Moon Boy's still alive <laughs> I think who is? Moon, Moon Boy. Boy oh the guy that doesn't exist in the in the show <laughs> Um. so my point is this like sure after it's shown good for you you saw it coming but before it's shown, before it's marketed, before it's put on your screen, you know, you can't say that it was just obvious. Oh, that was going to happen. Side uh-huh. note, this is also why I consider Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Super to be one of the greatest shows ever made. But people just look at it in hindsight and say, oh, yes, well, that was obvious. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The, it's the Seinfeld problem. Yes. Explain the Seinfeld problem. The Seinfeld problem is when a show comes out and it's so innovative at the time that every show that comes out after it 
copies its ideas and its themes and Don't its tropes. Um, and in hindsight, you know, somebody who grew up on, let's say, DBZ or Seinfeld, they are like, oh my god, this is mind-blowing. And someone, let's say now, as they look back in, on DBZ or Seinfeld, and it's like, okay, I don't see what the big deal is. What's uh, Okay, all they're doing is, is screaming as they power up. It, it's been done a million times before. And, you know, there's there's five shows airing this season alone that that's happening in. Who cares? We already know that they're going to beat them. Why even watch it? Uh, yeah, so more specific, like, it's it's better than they're screaming as they power up. It's just like, oh, so he goes Super Saiyan. Spoiler. Yeah. Who cares? Like, what do you mean, who cares? Like, at that point, we had, like, three different versions of what a Super Saiyan could be. We just talked about it. It was a concept. And uh, Vegeta said that he was the Super Saiyan. He said that uh, Goku was a Super Saiyan. And then he goes through the transformation. Uh, who who does that? Uh, who did that video? It was just like, then you see what a Super Saiyan is. And there's, like... We were just watching that uh, that video the other day. He did a really good job explaining it. We should uh, link it. I do not even remember which which one. Um, where he was saying he was talking about this exact thing where you know you heard about the Super Saiyan. It was of legend. Oh, um, I think it was the problem with Shonen anime. Okay, uh, we'll put the link down. Or, yeah, or we'll something. find it. Look through um, your history. Yeah. So basically. You know, you're told about it. You kind of understand it. You think that's the hope. And then all of a sudden you see the golden hair, the green eyes, the golden aura. And it's like, oh, that's a Super Saiyan. And in that moment, it's like, holy shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And and the Earth is literally, or the the planet is literally cracking under him and, and floating up. When you look back in hindsight, we've done Super Saiyan a million times. Who cares? That's the essence that's being lost to history. That's the that's what's being lost. Like, well, obviously that, you know, so-and-so gets their eyesight back. There's no predicting that. Like, when you're there for that moment, you get the gravity of it. And Especially for, like, Game of Freaking Thrones. You can't pretend. Nothing's predictable yeah. in Game of Thrones. However. Well, obviously Ned Stark is still alive. John Jon Snow coming back was a bit predictable. You know, um... It's kind of interesting. Uh, George R. R. Martin started his career as a uh, writer for The Twilight Zone. And something that people would keep saying to him when they met him in person to get autographs or whatever was like, Oh, I loved that thing. I, I guessed every part of it. And, it, you know, I was right. Yeah, <laughs> I won. Um, and he would he was, like, super frustrated by it. Everybody could guess the plot twists and, you know, he was super mad. Uh, So, Game of Thrones was his way of, you know, telling those people, basically, you know, you'll never succeed at this. You'll you'll never figure out what plot twist is going to happen in this because, oh, it defies every everything that you've ever believed in about fiction. It's impossible to to decipher what's going on in this. Nothing. It fall. It breaks every rule of fiction. The main, the main character dies in the first season. You you see his head get cut off from his own perspective. Yeah, so it it drives me nuts when you have people saying, "Well, that this was obvious." Like, no, it wasn't. Are you saying it's obvious because it was done? Good for you. You're really smart. What's going to happen next season? You know, and and then they're they're silent because they're like, "Well, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 like it's just not obvious." Like, sure, you can look back. Hindsight's a thing. Don't take credit for their brilliance. You have to be there, and you, you know, for right now in Dragon Ball Super, this tournament is fantastic. I have no clue what to expect. Yeah, I, you know, we, there's several uh, uh, super bingos that are out right now. <laughs> 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 People are guessing, like, and we have such a diverse amount of guesses. Like, who's who's gonna job? <laughs> <laughs> free spaces for cheetah jobs because that's just his job now <laughs> um hit jobs is one of the spaces yeah i love that i think that's gonna happen but at this point like how like i don't know but you know and there you know could be one of jobs could be both jobs could be everyone jobs like who knows maybe goku's gonna job you know <laughs> like you just don't know and then it happens and um 
to take away from that moment and say that it's predictable, it's just like, you, that's, no. <laughs> you missed the point. Um, go back and do it again or something. Like, you have to, you have to realize that right now we have an uh, awesome opportunity to watch this as it comes out, to make these theories, to let our theories fall on their faces in hopes for something better. Or for that moment of catharsis when you got one fucking thing right. Yes. The the <laughs> one theory that was crazy and yeah. it turned out to be true. Like Goku actually jobs. <laughs> no, no, like like the one that came true in Game of Thrones. Yeah. That that um like our first moment in with the uh with the feast. Uh well that's not what I was talking about, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Um <laughs> to me it seemed pretty obvious. But um, no, I was talking about about Jon Snow's heritage, and mm -hmm. those theories were out there years ago. Yeah. Okay, let's let's get back on topic. We Game of Thrones. Um, we'll wait a little bit later for. Uh, what were we talking about again? Dragon Ball Super. Yes, uh, which we'll also talk a little bit about later. Um, you had some thoughts about it though. Uh, in vague terms. In vague terms, basically that it's in completely uncharted territory. And so it does both the fan and the show a disservice to spend too much time looking at it in hindsight. Right now, I have no clue where it's going to go, and I am loving it. Yeah. Um, it seems like it could go anywhere. Uh, and with the amount of chaos that's going on like who knows it's probably not going to end in the way that it's they're saying it's going to end or it's it, continue I should say yeah I don't know so anyway that's all I want to really get across by the you know using Game of Thrones as a as a perspective window yeah I, I see what you mean um okay so back to news uh, researchers discover safer Earth re-entry thanks to Gundam. <laughs> uh, yeah. In Gundam Zeta, uh, they basically used a sort of, uh, it's basically a, a inflatable, like, whitewater raft that they use as a upside-down parachute. And, yeah, they're, they're saying that they're going to use that as a re-entry thing. I just love the idea that we have some weeboos at NASA. Yeah, that's great. So it looks like they tested this out on, uh, like, a satellite or something, and it worked. So next step, um, unmanned spacecraft. So here's looking at future, you, future gum, Gundam tech, not gum tech. Um, there's a ton of news in... The Fate Universe. Ooh, one of my favorites. One of my favorites, too. After you're done watching Code Geass, uh, you can watch Fate Zero. Fantastic series. Or fantastic show. One which I have also yet to Oh, to my finish. God. <sighs> uh, wow. 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 Um, that one, though, I, I actually want to finish. Uh, yeah. Yeah. None of you guys played the the original visual novel, did you? No, I don't nine. think so. Um, so Heaven's Feel is the the new movie, which will essentially finish off uh, the sort of trilogy, I guess you could say, of Fate Stay Night. the The first TV show kind of was a mess of a combination of of all of them, and. In almost everyone's opinion, Heaven's Feel is the best one. Uh, uh, is this the one where they got uh, Wife King Arthur? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I look forward to... I, 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 I love the, um, the Fate series. I love the concept of having heroic spirits at the beck and call of powerful mages of all ages and um, different levels of psychosis. You know, like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, psychosis. Yes, they all got their own problems and things going on. That's but, true. I mean, it's incredible. Um, 
the archetypes that are present, the storytelling, the pacing. Um, it's really fresh. It is, it is just a collection of archetypes. That's true. Yeah, oh, it is. Uh, it, and it's brilliantly written. Um, Ryder in the Zero series is another one of my favorite characters. Uh, and is basically the living T-Man who's on his phone. Yeah. Ryder. Yeah? Ryder. Yeah? yeah? Get off your phone. Who's on his phone? You. We're talking about Nobody fate. else can see We're it. talking about fate, fate Zero, and you're completely blanking out on the conversation. I'm listening. What do you... What do you think about Fate Zero? I like it. Who's your favorite character? Ryder. That's great. That's all you have to say about that, I guess. Anyway, if you like uh, Fate and all of its various um, servants and archetypes, then you will like Fate Extella, which is getting a police... Uh, wow, police. Getting a PC version um, on July 25th. It's getting a politically correct version. Yeah. This this one doesn't have Wife Saber in it. Um the politically correct version. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is basically uh, a Musou game, uh, like a Warriors game. Uh, so you can play as a bunch of servants, uh, Saber or um, Artoria is one of them. Gilgamesh is in there. Yeah. Uh, what was Lancer's name? Oh, the Irish one? Yeah. Oh. Uh, began with a G. Yeah, I know this. No, it, no, I don't think it did. It began with a G. Go, Gilgamesh? No. Irish man. Anyways. Anyways, Lancers in there. Um, as well as a bunch of different... Uh, I guess they're new characters or from different... Uh, different fate like you know spin off things uh so look forward to that ten mm-hmm. percent off on the first week Ooh. of um a price of fifty dollars uh and d l c will be twenty percent off for the first week yay d l c great uh and we none of us have seen fate apocrypha have you we? can't even say it. No, I can't, I can't even say it. Apocrypha. <laughs> Apoc- Apoc- uh, anyway, the new the new show. Nine. I have I haven't seen it, um, but I want to see it. Um, I think this is oh, a uh, different cast. Yeah, it's we're diff- no longer Arteria. Right, and it's it's um, set in. World War Two, post World War Two. So yeah, that looks sounds interesting. Um, yeah, we can leave so that there. I'll have to I'll have to watch that. We'll all have to watch that. Yeah, definitely. Steins Gate. Steins Gate. We yes, bo- we both like that. Uh, we we've reached almost top tier for me again. Um, I actually did a cosplay of Okube. Uh, when we went, the Dragon's Treasure went for a cosplay beach bash uh, last year. And, oh, yeah, big fan of Oka Bay, big fan of Steins Gate. Um, anyways, yeah, we, we have, we have, uh, you have the disc of that, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's here somewhere, but, um, I'm going to have to hit my, my microphones to, to reach it. So I'm not gonna try, uh, because it will collapse everything in this, this cable-strewn environment. We gotta but, put a picture of this place up, it's hilarious. Yeah, there's, there's duct tape and, and wires everywhere. Uh, but yeah, uh, I have the PS4 version. I played it like all the way through. It is m- much better. Well, it's moderately better than the original because the original is incredible. Uh, it's the the gist of it is, uh, what if the cast just gave up on their? You know, I'm gonna. Uh, you know, stop fate itself um, between episodes 24 and 25. Yes. You know, the the second before the last episode. What if they, what if he just gave up? Okay, I, I'm going to interject here. The brilliance of this series and this game 
and this line of thought is it's not what if. In in those in this world that exists that happened it actually happened and you know they do they do acknowledge that in various points during the series and I assume the game too right where like what there there are um, almost infinite timelines that are happening simultaneously it's, it's essentially infinite yes um and it's not that uh it's it's not that necessarily um they cease to exist after they jump it. It's just that uh, Okabe, the main character, was jumping to find the perfect timeline so that he could save his friends. Yes. And so the original series is written in in pretty classic anime style where I will find the perfect future. I will find the way to make my Nindo work, you know? (laughs) Uh, And they do it, and it's beautiful, and it's wonderful, and watch it. Um, uh, well, oh, well, I forgot to to say the most important thing um, that they're making an anime of uh, Steins Gate ooh. Zero, so that's great. Super happy about that. News. Yes. Um, so you and, you you should play the the visual novel of the original. I'd love to. Um, uh, I I would love to have you, more you would, of this in my you life. You would love to. It's it's like forty hours long, but it's Only? worth every every second um there there are are like you know a lot of bad endings that are like non-canon yeah and it's like oh wow that was a bad ending <laughs> um th- there are like to clarify do you mean bad and like this sucked or bad in the sense of oh i'm sad yes bad as in oh i died <laughs> uh oh and- i oh i died and that was a Good ending. So, <laughs> so that was a good way to die. Sadly, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to bring this back to the, the game at hand, the new version. The, you know, the, the the brand new model. Um, so I remember seeing the the cover, and it's not in front of me because Nick's lazy. Um, but the no, the I'm art careful. says I'm careful. The art says a lot. Uh, if you look at the yeah, the cover it, of this, it, it is Okube is just broken. Uh, he, he's a he shell looks of like, his former self. Yeah, he looks completely hollowed out. The, the the colors are kind of like watercolor and subdued, and there's chains and cogs and, you know, all of these confining aspects. And so um, after looking at the art and after thinking about it, you know, again, the, the original series was, I'm going to make my Nindo work. This one, they've deviated from that. And so now you're in a less than ideal, by definition, because you found the ideal, reality. And now what I think is going to happen, Okube is going to start broken, and they're all going to kind of band together and make the best out of a less than ideal situation. And to see how this, um, this, these groups of intellects that were behind this series tackle that storytelling, I couldn't be more excited. Um, yeah, what do, you, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Or I'm just going to let you believe that. Okay, that's what I'm going to... That, that's my belief I'm going in there with. I, I might be disappointed or surprised or made happier, but... Yeah. Uh, you'll you'll be made more uh, excited. Oh, glorious. Okay. But yeah, the the art in the games, both of them, uh, they have this, this watercolor style that's great. Um, and it carries over to the anime a little bit because they have their own kind of unique tone. Um, mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it's not unique to zero, but yeah, it is really good. Uh, both of the games are good. Um, the first one's on steam. I don't know if the second one's going to come out on steam, but it is out on PS4 and, um, Vita. So you you can get those. Yeah. So and, I, said, and I I don't know what else this is the first one is on besides Steam. I think it might also be on uh PlayStation stuff. Uh yeah. So the last note I'll say on this particular series is that you know, again, watch Code Geass, that's for number one. And <laughs> and actually, uh I think that as a series, like as a whole, I like Fate Zero next. But intellectually and in terms of, you know, thinking about it, fueling uh, thought, fueling imagination, uh, Steins Gate is right up there with these ones um, and in some ways surpasses it. So it's kind of like, um, you know, where everything else is the whole package. This is sort of a savant and just that it, it fuels 
um, me actually trying to piece apart the universe and that sort of thing. So if that's your style, uh, check it out. Yeah, so if if you've never heard of Steins Gate um, or you don't know the de- the details, basically, uh, it starts out as this mad scientist guy who's kind of uh, incompetent and um, a bit childish. Uh, he accidentally creates a time machine out of a microwave. And, and a banana. And a banana. The banana was more of a test subject, but uh, yeah, he accidentally creates a time machine and sends a uh, a text back in time, and that is a bad thing for reasons. Uh, so he changes the past inadvertently, and uh, and then they find the, out the, what can change faster, him the, or the past. The the, the plot kind of goes in all kinds of direct it goes in every direction at once from there mm-hmm. and uh in in the first one because it was a visual novel um you know you have a, a, a bunch of diverging paths that you can go down based on the choices that you make in the game which is why it works well as a visual novel but the way they did the show um was good in that it hit all of the um the sort of endings in like the same order that um that it did in in the visual novel so even though uh it was a different medium that was hard to pull off uh as a TV show a lot like the the first uh Fate Stay Night um TV show they kind of just with Fate Stay Night they kind of just mashed everything together and it was like a like a lump of of all the various endings um that's that's why they made the Unlimited Blade Works show and movie and they made now they're making the Heaven's Feel movies uh with the first one, they just kind of took them all and, and smashed them together. But with Steins Gate, they did it perfectly where it just flowed right one into the next. And so I can I hope that they can pull out the same with Zero because um, you need to be able to to hit all the endings in order to understand what's going on. And it's kind of cool because you can finish the endings in any order... And you won't know what's going on until you finish all of them, but every ending gives you a bit more of the clues uh, to piece together what's happening. And by the end, it's like like putting together a puzzle. Yeah. All right, next thing. Next thing uh, is Mario is definitely human, despite looking like a weirdo. Um so in Super Mario Odyssey, uh, Mario is walking around this this realistic city with, you know, fairly realistic people, despite being a, a weirdo cartoon character. And so people are like, so is Mario actually a, a human or is he just a weirdo? Is is he a a, a Mario race? Uh no, he's human. So that's that's settled. So this is odd for me because it 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 makes me question the motives of having the conversation. Like why why is it um why is it a necessity? Why did someone even think about this? <laughs> like um Well, because you see Mario standing Okay, so up till now you've never seen Mario um next to an ordinary person but now there he is and peach is fairly like you know in terms of what they could do at the time she was pretty proportional but she's she's still a cartoon kind of character the whole thing is a bunch of cartoons i just find the entire question to be silly but in 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 the game in the new game they're just regular people like they they look like people and then there's Mario. And then there's Mario, and <laughs> and Peach kind of looks like a person, but like more than Mario, but less than a regular person. 
so, I mean, again, like what's really, why are we having this conversation? Like, you know, no, no matter what we do at the end of the day, he's going to be a fictional character, you know? So like Lelouch Van Lamprouge from Code Geass, which you should watch. Uh-huh. Uh, he is a human I've being. Heard this. Huh? I've, I've heard about, we should watch this. Yes, we should. And you should too. Uh, he's a human being because what what they're trying to do at the end of the day in that show is sort of like, you know, he was going to change the world no matter what happened. He was given a gift and you should realize your gifts and he uses that to the best of his ability and that's why he gets where he does. You know, there's there's an underlying like you can too. Um, and – but they never come out and say like, Lelouch, you homo sapien. Like, <laughs> it, it, no one even has that conversation. But it is explicitly being had here. And so I think one of the, 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 the benefits of some of the more uh, – what, what, what would you call them? Um, <laughs> some of the more deplorable factions of anime. Um, <laughs> like let's, let's, let's say the furries, um, you know, is that you can have your waifus and even if you went and found them somehow in real life and got dirty, you ain't having children. Because they're of a different species, you know, they are, you know, waifus are safe to, you know, to fantasize about because no matter what, no matter how hard you fantasize, no matter how hard anything else, like even if they were real, oops, sorry, I'm, I'm banging the pen. Even if they were real, uh, nothing would come of that. You know, you, you can, you can basically procreate to your heart's content, you know, versus if you make Mario a human, there's no real reason to make him human. There's no reason to have that conversation. And there's no reason to pause and be like, Mario, you homo sapien. Besides now, you know, you've, you've outed him like, okay, now if you get down with Mario, you can get the STDs. <laughs> like, uh, I don't think anyone was kind of heading in that direction, but it's, it's okay. It's a uh, proper and improper use of fantasy. Like there are, there are things that you can use, but like to have this conversation about a fictional character, like what is it adding to the conversation? Well, now we know he kills innocent animals. We don't know if they were actual animals though. Like that was a turtle and you know it. Yeah, that was a turtle. What is are, it? What are Goombas? Are they mushrooms? Uh, I think that they might just be... They're like just, they're homo just like, goombas. They're just goombas. You know, like like there's some sort of Latin we term, had I suppose. All one. Like They had also humans. Adding Oh no. Adding modern human <laughs> Mario, genome. You sociopath. <laughs> adding adding the modern human genome to this game adds nothing. And so, you know, I again I went in one specific location, but ask yourself, like, what is this adding or subtracting? Uh, well, you know, you, you kind of always assumed that Mario was a human, right? No. Uh, I didn't I assumed care. that he was a video game character. Well, but in the game, you assumed that he was a person, not... In the same way that I assume most anime characters are people, it doesn't really matter to me whether or not they share 98 or 6% of my genes, like... That's that's okay. So if, making something into it, something if, that's not. If it came out that Lelouch was like uh, a Goomba, a Goomba, he doesn't look like a Goomba. Well, but, but what if he was? If he was a Goomba, what if the what if the director or whoever then said could, that Lelouch is a Goomba? Then I could have Lelouch without fearing STDs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you. I think. The the recommendation of Code Geass needs to stop now. No, it doesn't. It's become creepy. You need Lelouch inside your life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And other orifices. I don't think life is an orifice. <laughs> uh, mine feels like a black hole. Anyway, uh, so uh, Full Metal Panic is... is <laughs> <laughs> full metal panic full metal. full metal panic full metal panic everybody full oh, metal panic <laughs> uh full metal panic is getting a new a new anime season um and i'm super hyped about this this was the first manga that i bought um and so the first 
season is kind of like it's wacky school hijinks combined with uh, you know robot fights and stuff. What was the two things again? Wacky school hijinks <gasps> and robot fights. You know what this reminds me of? <laughs> anyway. It, it, it's not Code Geass, but... I was uh, going to say it, but since you did... Yeah, and then the second season is um, just wacky school hijinks. And then the th- third season is just robot fights. And it's like a complete genre shift. Like, it's super depressing and really dark. And... um because it's based off like the first nine volumes are their own set. It, it's kind of like Naruto Shippuden, and that it's um, it's it's a you know sort of this is where it ends and a different thing begins. Okay. So Full Metal Panic ended at um, volume nine, and that's where the first anime ended. Um, and then they ad- added some wacky hijinks for another season, but, um, Full Metal Panic Sigma is where the second season begins, and they made 12 episodes of that, um, which was like, you know, a couple volumes, and then they just stopped, which was a terrible idea, because, uh, it is one of the most unpredictable, uh, anime robot shows that starts off like like in that such a cliche way like that. Uh I don't want to compare it to uh Code Geass, but it's up and there. And that's your first mistake. It's it's up there in terms of unpredictability and oh, it has it has one of the best betrayals I've ever seen in all of fiction. Ooh. Yay. Yay, yes. It's like our friendship. No, I, oh, well, I don't want to compare it to Code Geass. Betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that was a compliment because you hold it in such high regard yes, I do. that I don't want to compare it. And so will everybody listening to, once to they the watch it this week before that, next that week's you... podcast. I like Ham Toto. I... <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now that's... we can't say said no one ever. <laughs> that's nice. All right. In other news. Uh, anime studio Artland closes down. <gasps> Did I've... they make him Toto? No, they didn't. At least not as far as I know, because I've never heard of them before. But they did make uh, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Ooh. Macross, Mushishi, Ooh. and uh, a bunch of other things. Uh, Katekyo, Hitman Reborn. And I guess it's kind of my fault that I... Um... That, that they're closing down because all those wonderful shows, I never watched any of them. Really? Uh, n- none of them. I, I watched a couple episodes of a p- couple episodes of Legend of the Galactic Heroes, um, but that's it. Yeah, uh, actually a lot of those shows were really interesting, but I'm in the same boat. Like, I saw, I think, probably a little bit more than half of Mushishi, and um, actually we used a couple of the screenshots from... Legend of the Galactic Heroes for our T panel, um, but I mean, other than that, I I really appreciated the textures and uh, there was a unique way that they went about creating their shows, and it's kind of sad that they're going to be gone. But uh, you know, like you said, I guess it's my fault. Like I didn't really religiously watch any of their I shouldn't religiously watch anime. Uh, I didn't really follow any of their shows. Yeah, well. Alas, Alas. now I never will be able to, nor will Charles' children. What? Uh, Okay. Anyway, uh, it looks like we're all out of tea and out of time. Oh. So, um, any last words? Well, I've got some. Um, On my channel, Analog Drift, I will be giving a way... Uh, a copy of Shadowrun Dragonfall Director's Cut for Steam. Um, whoever makes the most interesting, thought-provoking, and insightful comment on any video on my channel will win the, the game. Uh, you have until se- not September, uh, August 22nd, I think, to um, 
to make a comment. You can make as many comments as you want, but making a bunch of junky comments will not really do anything for you. So watch some videos, think about them, and go ahead and post a comment. Good advice. Um, for this channel, uh, you know, this is our first uh, podcast, so let us know what you think down below. If you like us, like us. If you don't like us, leave us some suggestions down below. Um, and tune in next week. What tea will be drinking next week? Ooh. Next week, let's see, we'll be drinking... Ah, uh, I have like 50 teas. Let's see. Well, you say, take some time to think about that. Uh, if you want to send us letters, or uh, emails, um, any questions, complaints... That you're too cowardly to leave down below. Uh, anything like that. You could ask us anything about anime, what we think, uh, about tea. Something we are experts discuss. about that. We are experts on tea, anime, uh, evolutionary, neuropsychology. Uh, we're not experts about that so much, but you can ask questions. I've read a book. Yeah. Um, feel free to ask. Uh, teacast at thedragonstreasure.com. Uh, we'll have put a link in the description, so, uh, feel free Ask anything. We'll answer it if we have any kind of possibility. We'll probably have the possibility of answering it. I decided since we talked about Cowboy Bebop, next week we'll be drinking Space Cowboy. Ooh, that's a green tea. It is. Yes. Uh, so we'll enjoy that next week. Um, and I'll put in my nice little thing again. Make sure to visit dragonstreasure.com. TheDragonsTreasure.com Yes. Also, I also run a YouTube channel with Mr. John over here That's called me. The Dragon's Temple. It is a channel about Taoism, relating it from its ancient roots up to modern day society. Give that a check out. The Dragon's Temple. The first step is the video out now. That's it. That's it. Alright. With that, we will see you next time. Space Cowboy. Bang. Bang.